A warm greetings to one and all. In this session, let's learn about polynomial curve fitting. As a part of introduction, let's start with curve fitting. Curve fitting is to identify the relationship between the dependent variables and independent variables. Let's take the diagram for the reference where input variable x is represented as x1, x2 up to xn transpose. It is also called as training deposit. It is represented in blue colored dots. The target variable t is equal to t1, t2, t2 transpose, which is also called as actual data or new data. Here, transpose is mainly used to represent the input variable x and the target variable t as a column vectors. The actual function used is sine 2 pi x. We can see the curve, which is represented in green color here. It is the function sine pi x. It is mainly used to represent the actual relationship between the input variable x and the output variable t. So this is what sine 2 pi x. Now the goal is to predict this training set in order to make predictions of the value t of the target variables for some new value x of the input variables. We shall fit the data using polynomial function of the form y of x comma w is equal to w0 plus w1x plus w2x square plus up to wm x to the power m is equal to summation of j is equal to 0 to m wj x power j where w0 is a constant w1 w2 up to wn is coefficient of x. The values of the coefficient will be determined by the fitting the polynomial to the training data. The red curve represents the model predictor values that is y of xn comma w for different input values xn. The blue dots represents the actual observed values tn. So this is what the blue dot it is called as target values tn to the corresponding input values xn. The green vertical line indicates the difference between the predictor values and the actual values. The difference is known as errors or residuals. The error function is defined as e of w is equal to 1 by 2 summation of n is equal to 1 to n into y of xn comma w minus tn the whole square. In regression analysis, the model tries to find the optimal parameter which is represented as a weight w that minimizes the overall error across the data points. This is typically done by minimizing the sum of squared errors, that is residual sum of squares or RSS. Now let's learn about model selection or comparison. In this diagram, the green color curve represents the sine pi x curve. The red color line represents the degree of the polynomial curve. So here in first diagram, the degree m is equal to 0 and for the second diagram, the degree m is equal to 1. Here the polynomial line and the curve sine 2 pi x is not aligned properly. So it leads to perfect representation of sine pi x. Here the error value is very high. Next let's consider the degree of the polynomial curve as m is equal to 3. Here the polynomial line is aligned with the curve so it leads to best fit representation of sine pi x. Here the error is less. Next let's consider the degree of polynomial curve m is equal to 9. Here the polynomial line is aligned with the green color curve so it leads to excellent fit representation of sine pi x. Here the error is equal to 0. When you use a high degree polynomial like m is equal to 9 to fit a model it becomes very flexible and can perfectly fit the training data and resulting in zero training error. However this flex flexibility causes the model to capture not just the true patterns, but also the noise in the data leading to overfitting and increase the complexity of the model. So we can see here in this diagram, the graph shows that as the model complexity increases, the training error decreases, but the test error decreases only to a point, after which it increases due to the overfitting with the best fit occurring at optimal balance between the underfitting and overfitting. This means the model performs poorly on new unseen data, which means high test error. As the polynomial degree increases, the coefficient w 
grows larger. We can see here where m is equal to 9. The degree is equal to 9. You can see here the coefficient grows longer, causing the function to fluctuate widely between the points. Further contributes to overfitting and poor generalization. Copy of here in model selection and comparison. Let's learn about the steps involved to fit the nth order polynomial data. The polynomial function f of x is defined as a0 plus a1 x power 1 plus a2 x power 2 up to a n x power n transpose. Let us consider this as an equation 1. Now we need to convert equation 1 to matrix form as shown below. So f of x is written as f of x1. Then here a0 does not have any input future. So we are writing it as 1. Then for a1 we have the input future x1. We have written it as such. For a2, we have the input future x2, that is x1 square. Then for an, we have the input future xn, that is written as x1 to the power n. Similarly, we are writing it for x2, x3 up to xn plus 1. Since for the first term, we don't have the value x, we are starting from 1 and we are writing till n plus 1. Now we are writing for the coefficient a. So for coefficient a, we are writing from a0, a a1, A2 up to A. So this can be simplified as F is equal to X into A. Now we can rewrite it as A is equal to X inverse of A. So we need to find the coefficient value A. Hope you are clear in steps of polynomial curve system. Now let's consider the problem to fit the following points that is f of naught is equivalent to 1, f of 2 is equivalent to 3 and f of 4 is equivalent to 6. To fit the above points we need to use the formula a is equivalent to x inverse of x as we have seen in the previous slide. Now we have to assume that polynomial form f of x is equivalent to a naught plus a1 x power 1 plus a2 x power 2. Given f of x is converted into polynomial equations and then it is converted to matrix form as shown below. First, the f of x is converted into polynomial equations here. So let's consider f1 is equivalent to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x1 the whole square. Similarly, for f2, it is equivalent to a0 plus a1 x2 plus a2 x2 the whole square. For f3, it is equivalent to a0 plus a1 x3 plus a2 x3 the whole square. Now we have to convert this polynomial equation to matrix form. That is, first we have to write the f column matrix equal to x input future matrix into coefficient a column matrix. In polynomial equation, the first term is constant since it does not hold the input future for the value x. So we simply write it as 1 here. So the next term is x1. Here, we write it as x1 in this x future matrix. The next term is x1 whole square. So, we write it as x1 the whole square. Similarly, we write it for f2 and f3. Then, we multiply it with the coefficient matrix A. That is A0, A1 and A2. This matrix form has been converted into this form. That is A is equal to x inverse of f. We can see here A is equal to X inverse of F. So now we have to substitute the values for this as shown below. So the value of X1 is 0, the value of X2 is 2 and value of X3 is 4. So we can see here we have substituted the values of X1 as 0, X2 as 2 and X3 as 4. So the next term is X1 square, X2 square and X3 square that is written as 0 square, 2 square and 4 square. We have inversed it and we have written it as 1, 3 and 6. This 1, 3 and 6 is the value of F1, F2 and F3. So we have written the values of F1 as 1, F2 as 3 and F3 as 4. So now we have to simplify it. Which means we are squaring this value and we have written it here. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2 square is 4, 1, 4 and 4 square is 16. Then inverse into the F value 1, 3 and 6. So if you are calculating the inverse and multiplying with this matrix, we will be getting the value of coefficient as 1, 0 0.75 and 0 0.125. So 1 is A0 value, 0 0.75 is A1 value, 0 0.125 is A2 value. 
So the final polynomial form f of x is equal to a naught plus a one x one plus a two x x square is equal to one plus zero point seven five into x plus zero point one two five into x square. So hope you are clear on this polynomial perfecting problem. Thank you all.